All right. At this point, everybody knows what UV mapping is, how it works. You take an object, you chop it up, you unfold it, and boom, you have individual parts of your image displayed on individual faces. You, of course, already know that. You're not stupid. But what if I told you that a good UV map can be the difference between this and this? What's up, animators? Welcome to Blend and Go. So let's blend and go. But how can something as simple as a UV map create such incredible differences in terms of quality? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a UV map has to show all the faces, not stretch those faces, and be proportional to the actual model so you get equal texel density. That should be enough to show my texture and keep the resolution consistent. So what's the problem? How do we get from this to this? UV maps Battery just died. Despite what many YouTubers tend to believe nowadays, Smart UV project, sharp, smart UV perfect, and just line this up. Smart UV. UV maps are heavily reliant on coverage. If your UV map is mostly empty, the vast majority of those pixels will never be shown. So you're, you're taking your texture and you're choosing to only show small, low quality bundles of it, which will make your texture appear, well, low quality urging you to upscale that image because the, the more the resolution, the better the quality. But given the fact that textures are one of the highest contributors to bad performance and slow responsiveness, is it really worth all those extra 4K textures? Most of the time, you don't even benefit from the quality of 4K because you're not using the 4K. So how can you maximize the use of your UV? Ah, how do I speak? Okay, take all the shortcuts you've learned. Smart UV project. Sharp edges smart uv project all of them project some uvs smart uv and throw them out the window the simply best method for a hyper efficient uv map is manual labor divide sensible parts of your uv map into uv islands by cutting them away from the rest of the mesh then add cuts so those islands are able to unfold onto a flat surface without any deformation to its faces now look it can be a lengthy process but it can also be fun if you think of it as a giant jigsaw puzzle Imagine you're cutting up the model and physically unfolding it onto a flat surface. Think where you might need extra cuts or which edges are preventing it to unfold truly. It's a little puzzle. Trust me, the end result is worth it. And finally, try to make your UV islands pretty boxy. So avoid overhangs or long shapes or bend shapes. You see here, I'd rather add a whole loop cut just so I can slice this UV island in half, so I can make use of the UV map. I would rather live with an extra loop cut than have an empty UV map. Textures are expensive. This, 100% worth it. All the way. Poly count is not as difficult to handle as image textures. Add cuts if you must. Once you have all your cuts, select your model or multiple models that you want to be using the same texture. Edit mode, select all faces and unwrap them all at once. That's how you keep them proportional to each other. That's why you unwrap all at once and also apply the scale. If you don't apply the scale, it's gonna be bad. You can use Blender's default UV unwrapping algorithm or something better like this free UV Packer add-on, which I love. It is free and I'll link it down below. I use it all the time. It's the best. So with this simple procedure, you're now using the full extent of your texture, effectively giving your model more resolution while improving performance at the same time. It's like magic. It's especially obvious with the normal data. Look at how clean this looks now when it has more resolution rather than before when it was you know, low, low resolution. So if you thought that UV maps were not fun or important, think again, because they could be the difference between a crappy model and a professional work of art. Stay sharp.